In this video, I want to continue a conversation about imposter syndrome and how it shows up in our careers and what we can do about it. Now, in order to understand this, it's important that we look at a little bit of neuroscience so that we can get a better understanding of how our brain impacts imposter syndrome. So that's what's coming up, but in case we haven't met yet, my name is Sarah Duty, and I'm a user experience designer and entrepreneur. And one of the things I do is run a program called the UX Portfolio Formula, which helps designers or people that work in product development and user experience, helping them better be able to articulate their work, their skills, their experience, so that you can be more effective, not just in your day-to-day -day role, but also when it comes time to work on your portfolio or prepare for job interviews. But today, let's pick up that conversation about imposter syndrome. So I'm gonna hop over to some slides because I think it's crucial to see some visuals that I've created for this topic. Okay, so one caveat, I am not a neuroscientist. I apologize if you are. Um, some of the visuals may not be perfectly uh, correct in terms of anatomy and things like that, but I just wanna say that up front. So in order to understand what kind of goes on in our brain and how that relates to imposter syndrome, we have to first explore a topic called the paradox of work. And the paradox of work really is the idea that even though so many people say they hate their job and that they'd quit their job if they won the lottery, in fact, through surveys done by career found, uh, career builders, excuse me, um, it came to light that it's almost a 50-50 split, that people say they actually wouldn't quit their job if they won the lottery. And the reason, and upon further investigation, it's because we actually find fulfillment in our jobs, even though we say we hate them. So let's dive into this a little bit more. How was this kind of validated? Well, in the, I believe it was 80s, although don't quote me on that, uh, researchers at the University of Chicago did what's called an experience study, where over the course of a week, they had 400 people all carry pagers, because this was before iPhone and all that, and the pager beeped seven times a day. And at the seven points during the day, the people had to rate their experience. Uh, you know, maybe it was while they were at work, or maybe it was when they were cooking dinner, or maybe it was when they were having drinks with a friend, or putting the kids to bed, or something like that. And they did this over the course of seven days. And the findings were that people were happier and actually felt more fulfilled when they were at work rather than when they were in their leisure hours. And the next question that came up was, well, why is this? Even though so many people say, oh my gosh, I would quit my job if I won the lottery. Well, it turns out that it's not just the job that makes us happy, but instead it's that our jobs create an environment for this crucial thing called flow to happen. And what does that mean exactly? Well, let's jump into it here. So in your brain, there is this part called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. And all you need to know about this as it relates to imposter syndrome is that this is the part of the brain that's responsible for self-monitoring, meaning things like that voice of doubt, that defeatist nag inside your head, that constant ongoing narrative of the inner critic. And the amazing thing is that when you are in a state of flow, that part of the brain is significantly decreased. And researchers at John Hopkins did a study where they put jazz musicians inside an fMRI machine and they had them play music. Some of it they had pre-memorized and then they were granted permission to just improvise and kind of go with the flow, no pun intended there. But they realized that 
when these musicians were in a state of flow, this part of the brain, the pre, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, uh, the red part, that part of the brain, when they were in a state of flow, ended up decreasing. And that allowed these musicians to be in this state of flow, which leads to more liberation, less hesitation, less fear, higher creativity. And that is what happens when we're in a state of flow. And you can probably now start to think back to times in your life when you've been working on something and when you kind of cross that threshold, you're able to just make things happen. And next thing you know, 20 minutes went by or two hours went by and you are then able to be creating, to be making without that fear and hesitation. And I think that's so far powerful and that made me just realize the power that we have inside our brains to get into that state of flow or stay in that state of fear and self-monitoring. And so the key here is, well, how can we practically deal with imposter syndrome? And the first way is to get ourselves to reach a state of flow faster. So maybe you've been in a situation like this where you have been given a task or you have a challenge and you're thinking thoughts like, I'm never gonna be able to do this. I'm definitely gonna screw up this project. My boss is completely firing me after this project is over or I have no idea what I'm doing. I know I'm gonna get found out. I know this is way outside of my abilities. I have definitely felt that many times, probably more than once a month. <laughs> and then you do it and you realize, wait, that wasn't that hard for a split second. And then you think to yourself, no, nope, I just got lucky. This is a fluke. The same thing's gonna happen next week. If you've dealt with this, leave me a comment and let me know that I am not alone in this. And the thing is, in all that time we spend with that worry, we are wasting so much time that could just be spent, set, spent creating. So we're wasting time, we're worrying, we're almost like settling into this state of inaction by just marinating in all this negativity. And we're doubting, largely we're doubting alone. But then as soon as you start, that is when you can start to reach that flow state. And that is also when you're able to get that thing done and cut out all of those negative thoughts as we saw earlier. So the key here is that you have to, number one, start so that you can reach that flow state because you'll never reach that flow state if you don't first just get started. And we have to stop paralyzing ourselves with procrastination. I am completely guilty of this, but I've also realized that it's crucial that we jump into just starting. So what are some things that I personally do to get into that flow state? Maybe you have similar rituals. I would love to hear them in the comments below. But for me, and in reading about different rituals that authors have or creative people have, uh, even programmers, I've been reading a lot of articles about that as well. But it's things like maybe realizing when do you do your best work? If it's in the morning, make that your kind of creative time. It's in the evening, plan your day around that. Other things like having a certain drink, or having your desk completely clean or checking your email first to get like your mind just at least not distracted by that. Maybe it's having a certain playlist. This is huge for me. I have special playlists. I play sometimes the same song on repeat if I feel like it gets me into that flow state. Maybe it's lighting a candle. Maybe it's uh, having some type of mantra. Um, you can go kind of as woo as you want on this, but I definitely wouldn't categorize myself as a completely like woo person, but I do find these rituals are really key to getting into a state of flow. And to be honest, this also translates to my personal life. I'm a huge runner and I have different playlists for different workouts. I have a half marathon playlist, a 5K playlist, a slow run pay playlist, and all of those 
help me get into that state of flow faster. So I'm not thinking to myself like, oh my goodness, I can't even run a mile. How am I gonna run 15 miles? What am I thinking, etc." It's kind of like a little bit of a mental trick, but I promise you that if you can reach this flow state faster, it's gonna help you eliminate a lot of that doubt because you are in effect silencing or at least turning the volume down on all of that self-monitoring, that fear and that doubt. So just remember that when you are in a flow state, that self-monitoring part of your brain, you're turning down the volume of it and that's enabling you to have more liberation, less hesitation, much more higher creativity and just letting that fear go away. So in the comments below, let me know what your rituals are that you found are helpful to help you get into this state. And maybe you haven't even realized that's what these rituals are doing. And maybe it's all clicking now, but let me know because I'm really curious. Maybe you have things you do that I can test out to see if it helps me as well. So leave your comments below and make sure to check out the description because I have more videos about imposter syndrome. I've decided to break these up into smaller videos so that you have more time to think about each one and so that we can engage in the comments and things like that. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.